The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from parts unknown, weighing in at 241 pounds, Bubsy.
And his opponent, from Castle Grayskull, weighing in at 220 pounds, Skeletor. There's the bell, and we are underway. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our scheduled broadcast of Australian Takeover Thursday, coming to you live from Pittsburgh. I'm your ringside commentator, David Foster. Who's joining me always, my partner in crime, Hall of Famer Bruce Johnson. Oh, Mike, fucking my back once again to Australian Takeover, Mike. Starting things off with a good old fashioned rivalry we've had uh, for a few weeks now Bubsy and fucking Skeletor. They had Bubsy and Skeletor first locked horns last year at our SummerSlam Invitational 10-man Royal Rumble. Skeletor was the uh, runner-up of that event, and Bubsy uh, went on to win the 10-man Royal Rumble. Winning this event granted him the opportunity to challenge the Boomerang Champion to a, uh, a title match, which at the time was Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, and he got his fucking ass handed to him. That's the second time he's tried for the Boomerang Championship and, uh, well, failed fucking miserably. And then good old Skeletor, he, he was runner-up. And then this year, at the same event, the SummerSlam 10-man Invitational Royal Rumble, he fucking won it. So, you know, good on him for coming back and improving on himself. That's definitely something that uh, most of these cunts need to uh, strive to beat. Yeah, then of course, Skeletor challenged uh, Duke Nukem for the uh, Outback Championship a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, he was unsuccessful in uh, winning the Outback Championship, but then Vladimir Putin came in and cashed his money in the bank right after his uh, Duke Nukem's title match and uh, won the Outback Championship. Damn bit of fucking uh, cruel irony that uh, Vladimir Putin cashed in the money successfully on Duke Nukem. You know, the same kind who failed to cash in last year at Money in the Bank. So sort of a bit of a cruel fate there. Vladimir still holds the... Uh, the Outback Championship, obviously. And uh, Dusty's our Boomerang Champion. We'll be seeing uh, him later on tonight. Yeah, we've got uh, quite the lineup. Senator Armstrong and Pomp Mop fight to uh, go head-to-head -head, uh, coming up next. Laura, Ro yeah, Rose White and Lara Croft. Excuse my words. Uh, also go head-to-head -head once more. Raven beat Lara Croft uh, last week. And... Uh, Two weeks ago, Rose beat Lara. So it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what happens tonight. We've also got the Texas Boys and the Dark Horses going head to head after they both won their tag team matchups. And the Warrior Brothers take on last week's winners, Team Fabulous. Hey, all the fucking tag teams going up against each other. Kind of reminds me of our Not a Champions Month, but not as, uh, not as intricate. And now, look at this. Bubsy trying to put some damage in with a Bubsy kick combo. Shoulders it down. One, two, another kick out of two. And Skeletor stays in the matchup. Oh, I mean, I don't think one kick combo is going to put down a cunt like fucking Skeletor. You got to do a bit more than that if you uh, want to get the three count on him, mate. And of course, for our main event tonight, Super Mario and Dusty White once again going head to head. Yeah, the fucking first week the two of them uh, came back against each other, they sort of, uh, well, they sort of forgave each other, which was a bit of fucking surprise to me. After the uh, attack Dusty White put on uh, Super Mario for the fucking Boomerang Championship, but I guess some people are just more forgiveful in this fucking uh, business. And now, look at this, Skeletor! Bone Buster connects. Down goes Bubsy, but is he out? Cover. One, two, 
Oh, the kick at it too by Bubsy. Yeah, these two are pretty much some of the toughest contenders for the uh, for some of the championships here, but neither of them have actually won a uh, championship belt, which is kind of surprising. As we said before, Bubsy's had those uh, two attempts at the Boomerang Championship, and Skeletor, he's had that attempt at the uh, Outback Championship. He's also been in some of the uh, the bigger matchups, like he was in our Battleground Elimination Chamber matchup for the fucking uh, Outback Championship. And that is, of course, when... Uh, that was when Duke Nukem won the championship. Only to fucking lose it two months later to a uh, Money in the Bank, as we said earlier. Skeletor and Bubsy going in and out of the ring here. Bubsy was trying to look the... Put him through the table, but gonna go back inside the ring instead. Yeah, only about fucking 30% of the people that actually tear up the uh, commentator's table decide to fucking use it. Most of the time, people tear it up but don't get the opportunity. And now, Skeletor setting it up one more time. Wait, hang on a minute. No, he's not. What's he doing here? Skeletor on the top turnbuckle. Good lord! Holy shit! Down goes Bubsy from the fucking top turnbuckle to ringside. Big fucking suplex there. Oh, I felt the fucking impact from here, mate. And he's still on his feet, though. I tell you what, Bubsy might not have a fucking championship, but he's one resilient cunt. I'll give him that much. And now, look at this. Bubsy trying to even the score. Bubsy Bob coming through. Shoulders are down. One. Two. No, a two and a half. And Skeletor gets the kick out. Yeah, I thought fucking Skeletor was sitting up for another uh, bone buster there. But, um, you know, he went for the fucking superplex. That's something you don't see too often. The last time we saw something like that was uh, fucking Little Mac and Shrek. First time ever I ever saw a uh, fucking Little Mac on the top turnbuckle, mate. It's not somewhere you usually see him. If at all, honestly. Bubsy getting put back inside the corner one more time. And now this time, with a choke slam from the top turnbuckle. Skeletor really using the corners to his advantage. Goes for the cover. And he gets the three count. Yeah, it's zero for the first contender, one for the next contender, yeah. Well, hey, you, you still won the bet anyway. Even if you did bet for the wrong person. <laughs> Ugh. I need to start writing fucking scripts for these things. Hey, Nip. I mean, the order that they're in for the match command is the same order for the betting options, so... Yes, Nat. I see you there. Hello. Oh, whoa. Skeletor with a uh, strong victory there. The Muscle Buster and the Superplex definitely doing the damage on the Bubsy. Yeah, and then that fucking choke slam, and apparently that was all she wrote. Don't go anywhere, though. Senator Armstrong coming up next against Puff Mop. What you're talking about, uh, Nip? I didn't do anything.
So for a second, I'm like, who the fuck is um, is Armstrong in a rivalry with? And I remembered now. I couldn't fucking remember for the life of me. Nep, nobody else calls me Cap in the Smug Haven server. You've got to use my actual name. I know you're used to calling me Cap, but... I only go by Cap in the bunker. Everywhere else I'm fucking down. Oh, look at this! Vladimir Putin attacking a uh, Puff mob here. Looks like he's going to intervene in the uh, scheduled matchup here tonight. Which means I need to change my fucking betting options. Hold on. Um, let me just refund your money real quick. Pick winner. Remove. Right. Fuck, hang on, there's like a few things I've got to change before I can actually get this match underway. Because I didn't realize Vladimir would fucking come through and be like, hey, sup, bitch. Okay, start. Is that right? That's right. Okay. <clears throat> well, this is unexpected. Vladimir Putin coming in and taking Pomp Mom's position in the uh, matchup here tonight. Yeah, we're supposed to have uh, Armstrong and Pomp go up against each other, but I guess the uh, I guess the champ wanted um, a piece of the number one contender, and they're both in the fucking ring. So hey, we're underway. Two big buff shirtless dudes in trousers going head to head here. Vladimir Putin, of course, as we said uh, earlier, was uh, this year's Money in the Bank winner. And he uh, used the uh, Money in the Bank to cash in on Duke Nukem at uh, Night of Champions. And now, look at this! Russian leg sweep! Vladimir wasting no time at all! One, two, now a kick out of two by Armstrong. Hey, fucking Vladimir getting right to the good shit. Armstrong's a tough opponent. You can't, uh, you can't underestimate him. And Vladimir becoming the uh, Outback Champion after successful Money in the Bank cash in at uh, Night of Champions. He has held the uh, championship since, after defending it in a fatal four-way Hell in a Cell matchup at, of course, Hell in a Cell last month. Yeah, against uh, some of the fucking toughest counts in the business. I think it was what. Uh, I know Armstrong was one of them. I think Terminator was another. I forget the uh, the third person. Oh, it was Skeletor. Vladimir Putin, Duke Nukem, Skeletor, and Senator Armstrong. Went a fatal four-way for the Outback Championship. And Vladimir with a successful fucking title defense. Armstrong, of course, fought his way into that matchup by winning a, uh, a different fatal four-way. It was an Extreme Rules matchup the week before... Uh, Hell in a Cell, and he had to beat Shaquille and he'll pump Mark from the fucking Terminator. And now that he didn't win the Hell in a Cell matchup, he's uh, looking to go for the champ himself. Goes for the cover, gets a one and a half count. Of course, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us at our scheduled broadcast of Australian Takeover Thursday. We come here live every uh, two weeks or so. Well, sorry, every week. And then, of course, we have our pay-per-view event at the end of every month. Last month was Hell in a Cell. This month is a, uh, a elimination chamber. Yeah, we uh, changed it up a bit from last year. It was Survivor Series, but uh, we decided to freshen things up a bit. And now, Vlad. Is he going to... Yeah, he is. Look at my... Vladimir, cold winner, stunner, straight through the announcement table. 
You know how I said about only 30% of people actually use the table? Yeah, that percentage might be wrong. Uh, as of recently, a lot more people have uh, been getting put through the fucking table, so. But hey, that puts on a fucking show for us, so. Even if we do get to replace the fucking table more often. Vladimir now going for the cover here. One. Two. No, the kick out of two by Armstrong. Even if he gets put through a fucking table, he can still kick out. He's not a uh, former Outback Champion for nothing. Even if the last time he did hold the Outback Championship was over a year and a half ago. I'm sure he's looking for that fucking all-important second win. But Armstrong's just come so close to the title so many times, it's uh... Oh, and the ref's gone down! <laughs> I suppose that's what happens when a fucking 220-pound uh, Russian just comes crashing into you. I guess he was uh, sort of rushing around the ring. Do you get paid for your shitty puns, Bruce? Probably. Armstrong now with the multiple power bombs here. And now it goes in the corner, lining it up here. Oh, look out, mate. American clothesline coming through. And now Armstrong with a cover. One, two, ref. Sees the rope break. Ah, oh, shit. Don't tell me it's going to do this. No, don't do this, you fucking cunt. Ah, you piece of shit. Well. I'm not going to restart because... <laughs> Do I restart? That's the question. I want a refund. Because I don't think if I quit and then simulate it, I don't think it's going to do the rivalry thing. So I might just have to go next and then just find out who fucking won later. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Well, like... I can't continue because it's soft-locked. <laughs> Can't go any further than that. I'd go for all this fucking realism, so I'm gonna have to do this. Yes, results will be simulated. And then we're not gonna start... Okay, who won? Armstrong, apparently. Cool. Now, what the fuck is next? Where's me fucking list, dude? Right, Rose and... Let me set up the next match, and then we'll fucking get underway. Jesus Christ. Very professional, by the way. I swear, this this, this doesn't usually happen. <laughs> yeah. So for all this fucking realism, and I just get cucked by the fucking game. It's like, yeah, nah, fuck you. Ah, oh, shit, she's not coming up first. It's you that comes up first, and then you. Right. Moving on. I wanted to talk about that more, but I guess fucking not, because I get screwed over by uh, soft locks. Could have had a lot better start, but oh well, doesn't matter. Lara Croft coming down and attacking Rose White before she even enters the ring here. Oh, fucking hell. We already had uh, Vladimir Putin interrupt the uh, last matchup with uh, Armstrong and Pomp Moth. And now we got fucking Lara, the champ, attacking the challenger before she even enters the ring. Oh, right into the steel ring post.
course, uh, both contestants must enter the ring uh, before the bell is rung, so that means anything goes. Well, now they're in the ring. There's the belt, and now we're underway. What a fucking start that was. I suppose that's the uh, the kind of shit you can only see here on Australian Takeover Thursday. Rose White and Lara Croft, of course, both uh, five-time uh, Sheila's champions are now around the world by Lara. Shoulders are down. One, two. Another kick at it too by Rose. Okay, almost thought it was going to be a real fucking quick matchup in the ring, and you know that was all she wrote. Rose with a quick belly belly. Also, of course, for those curious about the uh, the betting system, the more time you spend watching here at Australian Takeover, the more uh, dollars you earn. And then, of course, you can use those to uh, bet on our contestants here at Australian Takeover. For singles matchups, you will be uh, rewarded with uh, twice the payout. You can bet between 100 and a 1,000 uh, uh, points, or dollary dues, as we like to call them. Hit 900 dollary dues. And of course, you've got the uh, the much bigger fucking matchups where, if it's a fatal four way, you get four times the fucking money back. And now Lara with a Tomb Raider center impact. This could be it. One, two. No, a two and a half, and Rose gets the shoulder up. But yeah, the betting's just sort of one of the things we uh, like to do here with you guys. It's all virtual money. It's not actually real. Don't worry. I'm actually pretty sure it's actually illegal to bet on the WWE. And now, Rose here with a quick DDT. Yeah, as we were saying, both Rose and uh, Lara Croft, both five-time Sheila's champions, as the uh, championship has gone back and forth between the two over the last year and a half here at Australian Takeover. Yeah, Rose was their first ever champ. And now look at this. Quick cover here by Lara. Almost a three count. Rose gets out in the fucking nick of time again. Lara now getting put on the top turnbuckle. And there's only one way down. Yeah, and it ain't pretty. Rose now with a rolling slam. And she goes for a quick cover. One. Two. Now the kick out of two by Lara. Yeah, Rose was her first ever fucking uh, Sheila's champ and she held on, held on to it for about uh, eight weeks until Lara Croft uh, took it from her at Payback last year. And the championship's just sort of gone between all the divas here at, at uh, Australian Takeover. But oh, shit, look at that. That's a three count, and uh, that's the match. Don't know why you guys bet on Rose. She got attacked, dude. Come on. <laughs> that one should have been easy. At least the fucking thing didn't soft lock anyway.
Lara Croft getting a solid victory after attacking the number one contender before she even reached the ring. I'm sort of shocked, but also not really at the same fucking time. I mean, hey, if you're champ, you gotta do anything you can to, uh, to keep it. And, uh, I wouldn't expect any less from fucking Lara Croft. Well, don't go anyway. We got tag team action coming up for our next two matchups. Texas Boys and the Dark Horses go head-to-head -head coming up next. Ugh, bit of a fucking rocky start, but um, hopefully it gets better. I'd like to see something happen with fucking Mario and, and Dusty. Nothing happened last week, and to be honest, that's kind of been pissing me off. I want some shit to happen. Like the, the Vladimir Armstrong rivalry that happened earlier tonight. I want shit like that. The Mario and Dusty one's supposed to be the Survivor Series rivalry, but fucking nothing is happening. Compared to last year's Survivor Series rivalry, that was fantastic. This game just doesn't give me what I want sometimes. But then the other half of the time, it, it's fucking brilliant. So it's like, ah, fuck me, dead, dude. The following contest is a tag team match. Introducing first, from Texas, United States, the combined weight of 515 pounds. Coach and Hank Hill, the Texas Boys. Also from the United States, with a combined weight of 538 pounds, Duke Nukem and Gummy John, Dark Horses. There's the bell, and our fourth matchup of tonight is underway. The Texas boys taking on the uh, Dark Horses here tonight. Yeah, we're already halfway through the night, and now we're getting through the uh, the second half. Two tag team matchups back to back. The Texas boys, of course, uh, beat the Blue Man Group uh, two weeks ago, consisting of uh, Pips Man and Mega Man. The Texas boys, of course, uh, one of the New, the newest tag team to be formed uh, here in Australian TakeOver. To be honest, I don't know why they fucking didn't form, uh, form a tag team before. It was only recently that uh, the two blokes actually officially formed a tag team. It was like, hey, they're both from fucking Texas. Why not? And both of them haven't been doing uh, that crash hot in uh, 
the singles matchup, so they decided to try their hand at uh, tag team. And I tell you what, they've been doing pretty fucking well. Sure, they're not the tag team, uh, the cunt duo champions, but um, they definitely did really fucking well for their first time now. Yeah, the Texas boys have only been here for about four months or so. And of course, they joined us here for the uh, Night of Champions Cunt Duo Championship we had some months ago. The Texas boys went on to the final of the uh, King of the Ring tournament. And they, of course, went up against the Enforcers. Yeah, and then the Enforcers got that uh, cheeky pinfall win uh, on the rope break that the ref didn't see. And they won the Cunt Duo Championship. And the Texas boys have sort of been chasing the championship ever since. They were scheduled to have a rematch, I believe, at Hell in a Cell. But, uh, well, they got their asses handed to them several weeks in a row before Hell in a Cell, so they sort of didn't really qualify. Instead, the Warrior Brothers, uh, they did went on to uh, challenge the Enforcers. But they were unsuccessful. Even though the Warrior Brothers beat the Enforcers in a non-title match, they uh, couldn't beat them in the actual title match. They got a win when it's uh, the most important, you know. Dirk Nogan with a quick cover here. He gets a two count. Coach kicks out. And of course, speaking of the Enforcers, they've had a long time rivalry with the other tag team we have here tonight. The Dark Horses. Consisting of uh, Dirk Nogan and Gummy John here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, these two didn't even look in uh, each other's general direction in fucking season one. Way back then, Gummy John was part of the stream team. The uh, two-time former uh, Cut Duo Championship team of him and Pomp Mop, who we saw earlier tonight getting a shit kicked in by Vladimir. They were in a tag team, then they disbanded about halfway through the year. Gummy John went on to form the Dark Horses with uh, Duke Nukem. And Pomp Mop, well, he went on to win the fucking uh, Boomerang Championship. The Gummy John, of course, in his... Uh, different dark attire the same goes for uh, Duke Nukem yeah both of them done this new fucking uh, emo black way right about the time of Wrestlemania last year they started uh, targeting the superstars and with no holds barred matchups and just trying to fuck them up not doing all that well surprisingly and then they said hey let's just form a tag team and then fuck up the tag teams and they were a lot more successful surprisingly And of course, the Enforcers, who are current uh, current duo champions, tried to put a stop to them. And was successful in doing so, more or less. Putting the uh, Dark Horses in their place, but uh, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of the rivalry between the two tag teams. Yeah, now that the Enforcers are the current duo champions, they've just parted up. Pains at a real big fucking target on their backs, that's for sure. Or around their waists, really, because that's what the belts represent. It's like, I am the best in this business. If you want this, you've got to beat me. That's what those belts really are. And to be honest, I'm sure the uh, the Texas boys definitely want that uh, championship rematch. But they're going to earn it if they want it. Anyway, hand kill. Look at this. Inverted USA slam right off the top rope. And now, shoulders are down. What? Two. Now the kick out of two. And now Hank with a big slam in the center. Now Coach getting tagged in here for the Texas boys. Of course, the, uh, the Dark Horses as well, they uh, they beat the Mario Brothers two weeks ago in uh, order to be here tonight. Yeah, you got to win a few tag team matchups in a row if you uh, you want that championship shot. The Texas boys had to beat Blue Man Group. Quick cover here. He gets a two count to be here tonight. And the Dark Horses had to beat the Mario Brothers. The winner of this matchup has to fight the winner of uh, Warrior Brothers and Team Fabulous coming up next. And then the winner of that matchup, which is the number one contender match, fights the Enforcers for the Cutting World Championship and Elimination Chamber. So basically, you've got to win 
two more matchups to get the championship shot and then the third to actually win it these guys have already won the first one so now they just need three more to win the championship Duke Nukem look at this trying to go for power bombs but Hank Hill's gonna get out of trouble yeah, Duke was looking for some fucking serious damage there but uh, Hank Hill the slippery bastard sort of got out of trouble Whoa, look out ref Whoa, a big German suplex there. Ref now, back to his feet. He's got knocked down fucking twice tonight just from cunts running into it. I'm sure he gets fucking paid enough for it, though. And now Duke with a big butterfly suplex. He goes for a quick cover. He gets a two and a half count. Hank Hill kicks out. Oh, I almost thought that was going to be a fucking three count right there and then. And I'm like, hang on a minute, our tag matches aren't that short. Duke Nukem just going to work on Hank Hill in the corner. And now throwing him like he's nothing. I mean, Hank does weigh, what, 240 pounds. He's pretty much the same weight as Duke, but... Duke's just throwing him like he weighs nothing. Gotta love that uh, American muscle, I guess. Duke goes for the rolling neck breaker, misses the mark. Hank Hill now back to his feet here. We're gonna build some momentum. Beautiful gut buster. And now Hank Hill looking to do some damage. Oh, here we go, mate. Texas pile driver coming through. You want to know why they call him the Texas boy as well? That's one of the reasons why. Hank here with the shoulders down now. One, two. No, a two and a half. And Duke gets the kick out. Of course, we've got uh, more tag team action coming up later on tonight. The Warrior Brothers going up against Team Fabulous. Yeah, fucking uh, Team Fabulous, the only tag team to uh, have three-time cut into a championship. And look at this. Duke, uh, Duke Nukem gets the tag to Gummy John. Down goes Coach. And down goes Hank Hill. And now Gummy John with an opportunity here. Quick Diddy T. Hank Hill back to his feet now. Going back to the apron. Coach getting put in the corner. Into the tree of woe. Oh, I thought Gummy was going to set up a sonic kick, but uh, I guess he's going to go for a backstabber instead. Oh, just targeting the fucking base of the spine. Oh, there it is. Sonic kick connects. I was wondering where it was. Shoulders are down. One. Two. Almost a three count. Coach kicking out just in the nick of time. Yeah, I thought Hank Hill might have gotten the, uh, the interception there, but Duke Nukem stopped him just in the nick of time. But uh, lucky for the Texas boys, the coach kicked out as well. And now we head down the fucking ringside. Somewhere where the, the, uh, the Dark Horses actually specialize in. But uh, if you can beat them at their own game... Hey, go for it. Hey, the Dark Horse is, of course, the uh, specialists in uh, ringside fighting and the uh, Tornado Tag Extreme Rules matchup. Oh, right into the uh, steel ring post there. That rule set, of course, is how they've been able to... Uh, how they've been able to do such damage to the uh, tag team competition here for the past few months. But speaking of doing some damage... Coach here with a Texas jab. For the record, yes, all their moves are some form of Texas one. The only exception is Coach with his coach drop. They're pure-blooded Americans, don't you know? Even if this is an Australian series. Coach with a cover now. What? No, not quite a two count as Duke Nukem breaks it up. Oh, and over the top rope he goes. 
And now Gummy John trying to put him away. Gay baby jail. Shoulders it down. One, two. Now Hank Hale breaks up the three count. Oh, fucking Duke, what are you doing there, mate? He was right there and you could have stopped him. Coach getting put in the corner here. The uh, two illegal men trying to get outside the ring here. Coach getting put on the top turnbuckle. Coming with a uh, beautiful neck breaker there from the top turnbuckle. Gummy now makes the quick tag back to Duke. I mean, hey, Gummy's done his fucking uh, damage. He put him in the gay baby jail and now he's going to let Duke do some work. It's only a matter of time before Duke hits him with the, uh, the USA suplexes or power bombs. Duke on the top rope here. Falling slam, Kenax. Right in the center of the ring. But yeah, Team Fabulous fucking uh, coming up next. The uh, only tag team to win the Cut to a Championship three times. Uh, most of the other contenders have only been twice. That being the, uh, the Triple Aussies, uh, the Super Mario Brothers, and the Stream Team. And now Duke Nukem trying to put the damage on. USA Power Bombs goes for a cover. Gets a two and a half count again. The coach kicks out. Gets the rolling neck breaker this time, though. And now Duke Nukem trying to put him away. Look out, coach, because you're going to come get some. Big impact right on the face there. Any harder, and I reckon would have cracked him open. Duke with a cover once more. One, two. Now Hank Hill breaks up the three count. Now Gummy John slacking with the fucking interception. That could have been a three count right there, mate. That would have been all she wrote. That's the uh, that's the beauty of tag team matchups. They can be fucking five minutes, or they can be fucking thirty minutes. You never know. Coach getting a bit fired up here. Kenny made a comeback. To answer that question, mate, I believe it's uh, yes. Big fucking body press there. Look out, ref. Oh, a cross body right in the center. Coach now makes the quick tag. Back to Hank Hill here. Dark Horses do have the advantage at the moment, but uh, the Texas boys might just be able to uh, mount a comeback here. Duke getting out of the way of that big boot. And into the corner he goes. Oh, back on the top turnbuckle again. This is somewhere we've seen him quite a lot. And Hank Hill with a neck breaker from the top turnbuckle. Back and forth contest. Duke Nukem now. Bringing the momentum back into his favor here. Off the ropes and a beautiful face buster. And now Duke doing the same as coach. He makes a quick tag back to his partner. Gummy John goes for a quick cover here. One, two, three. What a cheeky pinfall, and the Dark Horses run away with a victory. Gotta love those fucking dirty pins. Beautiful. Oh, man.
The Dark Horse is running away with a victory there. Yeah, Gummy Joe getting that fucking pin used on the ropes. And hey, whatever gets the fucking three count, mate. Don't go anywhere, though. We got more tag team action coming up next with the Warrior Brothers. Take on Team Fabulous. Coming up next. Two of my favorite fucking uh, tag team intros as well, these two. Team Fabulous is probably my favorite tag team intro. Uh, followed by... Yeah, probably Warrior Brothers and Mario Brothers are both pretty good. But Team Fabulous, oh man. Best intro. Best tag team intro, I should say. Best solo intro, that probably goes to... Well, I'd say Shaq. I like his a lot. Who we won't see tonight, actually. We get to see... Or, well, technically we get to see him tonight because I do two... Two weeks worth of, um... Matchups in one stream. So we will be seeing him technically next week. Spoilers. <laughs> I guess. We've only got two matchups left for this set, and then we go to a commercial break, and then I set up the next slot. For those wondering how it works. <clears throat> The following tag team match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the WarioWare Incorporated, with a combined weight of 447 pounds, Wario and Waluigi, the Wario Brothers. the United States with a combined weight of 491 pounds, Ace of Spades and Big Gay Al, Team Fabulous. Our second tag team matchup tonight, the Warrior Brothers taking on Team Fabulous here. Both teams former Kondo champions, the Warrior Brothers had one under their belt. And Team Fabulous with three, setting the record for the uh, most uh, Kondo championship victories. Yeah, as we said before, there's uh, three other tag teams with two each, of course. The, the stream team, Triple Aussies, and the Mario Brothers. But uh, Team Fabulous sort of stands above the rest with that, with that all-important third win. But of course, that could change in an instant if uh, the Triple Aussies or the Mario Brothers win the vic uh, win the championship once again. But I uh, don't think either of them uh, are in the running this month. Down goes the ref again. Yeah, Team Fabulous, of course, beat the uh, Triple Aussies 
to uh, gain their ticket here tonight. They're going up against the uh, former number one contenders, the uh, Warrior Brothers. Of course, the winner of this matchup gets to fight the uh, the Dark Horses, who won earlier tonight, next week, for the number one contender spot. And the winner of that matchup goes on to uh, fight the Enforcers for the Cut Duel Championship and Elimination Chamber. Oh, my Elimination Chamber is going to be fucking great. Standard pay-per-view event rules. All the fucking championships are going to be on the line. It's going to be great. But Warrior with a quick cover now. He gets a two count now. Kicks out. The Warrior Brothers, of course, they got their first ever cut into a championship victory after uh, stealing it from the Mario Brothers last year at, uh, I believe, the Royal Rumble. Yeah, the Mario Brothers won it um, just four weeks prior at uh, TLC against, uh, sure enough, against Team Fabulous. And uh, they only held it for four weeks, and the Warrior Brothers stole it at the Royal Rumble. Then, of course, they lost it four weeks later at... Uh, at fucking fast lane. So that's the one and only time the Warrior Brothers uh, got their hands on the championship. Team Fabulous, meanwhile, they've been around pretty much since the start of Australian Takeover. And uh, they'll be honest, I can't actually recall <laughs> the three times they have won the championship. I know they beat the Blue Man Group for their more recent victory this year. I believe that was at uh, Payback or Money in the Bank. No, it was uh, SummerSlam. That's right. Because the uh, Blue Man Group went on to defend the Cut Duo Championship for 12 weeks straight, which is, of course, a record in itself, only tying with the Stream Team uh, for the longest title, longest time held for the Cut Duo Championship, which, of course, is 12 weeks. And most of the championships here do have a record at 12 weeks for being held. The uh, Sheila's Championship also holds this record. Raven. Uh, is the uh, current holder for that one for 12 weeks. The Boomerang Championship also has 12 weeks on it. That holder goes to uh, Shaquille O'Neal. The only uh, non-12 week holder was the Outback Championship when Dusty White held it for 20 weeks straight. Cool. Yeah, sorry, I had to pause my breath for a second. I'm thinking, hang on a minute, Vladimir, uh, fucking Waluigi, what's he doing? Going up to the fucking top rope here. But, uh, yeah, in the end, he didn't fly. Yeah, a lot of records, and, uh, yeah, Team Fabulous definitely uh, up there with some of the best of them with that three time cut into a championship victories. Hell, I'm sure they're looking for that fourth to cement them even further sort of claim themselves as the, as the undisputed cunt duo championship holders. We don't really have anyone like that just yet. Usually you're going to hold both records if you are. You want to call yourself that. And to be honest, the only person that uh, has done that at the moment is uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Who's held the title the most and has held it for the longest. Ace of Spades tagging back to uh, Big Gay R now. Now, what do you got to watch out for when you uh, when you face the uh, Team Fabulous here, Bruce? Basically, you want to stay out of the fucking corners. That's your biggest problem. Both Big Gay R and Ace of Spades have got those uh, deadly corner moves. Mainly the Train of Pain for Al and the uh, Buds Bronco Buster for Ace. They're the sort of big damaging moves in the corner you really don't want to uh, be on the receiving end of. But the same could be said for the Warrior Brothers. You know, Warrior's got that uh, fucking Warrior waft, or waft. And uh, Waluigi's got that fucking super kick. Although the difference with that one is he's in the corner, not you. But uh, that's not the only thing, you know. Team Fabulous have also got uh, plenty of other tricks up their sleeve. Big AL's also got that leg split drop. A gay rider and a stylish elbow drop. So he can pretty much hit you from just about any angle. Ace of Spades, meanwhile, he's got the lullaby knee, the lullaby slam. And he's got one more that I forget the name of. 
Ah oh, yes, the dancing leg drop, of course. To uh, go with uh, Big Gale's stylish elbow drop. So you can really see why the two are uh, sort of in a tag team and together. With a very unorthodox fighting style, as you can uh, as you can see here with Big Al and his fucking several headbutts there. <laughs> yeah, Team Fabulous may fight uh, in an unorthodox way, but of course, as we mentioned, they are three-time Cut the World Champions, so it must work somehow. If it looks stupid, but if it works, it ain't stupid. I think that's sort of a golden rule. Warrior now. Big choke slam from the top turnbuckle. And now speaking of Big Gal in the corner here. As we said, not somewhere you want to be. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at Al. Oh, the waft. Just sitting in there. Well, he's going to be feeling that one for a while. Warrior with a quick cover now. Two count, and Big Gal kicks out. Got to tell you what, it's taken a while, but we're uh, starting to get into this meat of this matchup now. And the boys are trying to pull out all their big moves while Luigi getting tagged in now. While Luigi with the uh, the quick high kick there. Oh, and the kitchen sink connects. While Luigi, of course, only one of two superstars standing over seven foot tall. Beautiful elbow drop. Yeah, while Luigi's uh, been a bit more aerial these days. Oh, the super kick though misses the mark. And now Big Gal with an opportunity here. No, tries to go for the face buster. While Luigi gets out of trouble. Big Gal getting brought to the corner. Wario tags himself in here. And now look at this, just holding him down. I mean, you gotta make the most of that fucking, uh, the 10 seconds you're allowed in the ring for both tag partners, you know? Wario with a beautiful slam there. Shoulders are down. One. Two. Oh, and Ace with the uh, breaking up the three count there. The Wario wear slam hitting its mark, but Ace of Spades breaking up the three count. Now look at this. Big gay out with a gay rider. Shoulders are down. One. Two. No, a two and a half, and Wario gets the kick out. That was fucking out of nowhere, let me tell ya. The big guy, I was just like, yeah, I've had enough of your shit, mate. Big guy, looking for the tag here now. He's not gonna go for it, though. Instead, gets put in the corner by Wario. Yeah, and this time he's, uh, he's not gonna waft him, he's gonna put him on the top turnbuckle. We're gonna get, yep, here we go. Choke slam one more time. Down goes out. Just fucking hear the impact that the cut makes in the center of the ring there. Warrior going for another pinfall here. Ace quick to break it up though. Collects the referee. I mean, hey, he broke up the pinfall. Ref can't count if he's fucking knocked out. War, uh, Waluigi's staying in the ring as long as he can. Ref can't count him out if he's unconscious. Beautiful uh, suplex there by Waluigi. Now uh, the snake eyes on a big gal here. And now Wario, look at this. Whoa. Wario whack hitting its mark. And now Wario going for a quick cover here. Ace is going to break it up because he's still in the fucking ring. While Luigi and Ace need to get out of the ring, and they're going to get uh, the team disqualified here. Wario now going to work with the uh, body blows there. 
Oh, and a quick military press drop. And now Wario looking to put him away. Oh, look at it, Al. This isn't going to be pretty. Wario wears slam for the second time. Cover. But Al breaks out. Yeah, I think it might have been a uh, bit of a rope break there or something. Not quite sure, but Al pretty much got out of that one instantly. Wario now pleased with the damage he's done. He's going to tag back to Waluigi here, Mike. Look at how desperately trying to get to his tag partner. Waluigi not going to let him, though. Of course, that's uh, one of the many strategies you've got to use in uh, tag team competition to try and wear down half of the tag team. Of course, the other half is trying to keep uh, both men fresh in the ring, consistently tagging between the two when the other team tries to stop you. And now Waluigi... Setting up the super kick. And it connects this time. Shoulders are down. One. Two. Three. There's the bell, and that's all she wrote. Good job, you won $132 it is. Yeah, it, it did go for a while. It, uh, by the time I ran out of shit to say, they were, uh, they were just getting to their super moves. I've got the momentum on high, but it just it just takes a while for it to get going for some reason, so I, I definitely gotta double check and make sure the momentum is on fast before I start every match. Because for some reason, it, felt like, it feels like it's on medium. Warrior Brothers defending their uh, number one contender spot but they've got to do it again next week as they go up against the Dark Horses. Yeah, and the winner of that matchup buys their ticket to an Elimination Chamber. Don't go anywhere, though. Our final matchup of tonight is coming up next. Super Mario and Dusty White. Please let something fucking happen in this match. I'm sick of nothing happening. Like, we already got two things before the matchups tonight with Armstrong and Lara. Please follow the fucking trend of the other rivalries. That's all I ask of you. I'm not asking much, game. This is supposed to be the Survivor Series rivalry for a six-man elimination tag team matchup. Now do that. Thank you. Something before the match or something after the match. Preferably before because then it's a guarantee. Because if it's after the matchup, sometimes it might not work. Fuck me. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the Mushroom Kingdom, weighing in at 215 pounds, Super Mario.
and his opponent from Outback Australia, weighing in at 232 pounds. He is the Boomerang Champion, Dusty White. Right. <clears throat> and here we go, the final matchup of tonight. Super Mario and Dusty White once again locking horns here tonight. Yeah, a bit of fucking uh, back and forth contest. These two are going with each other. I say back and forth, but Dusty White has won the last two weeks. So uh, it comes down to the question is can he go three in a row or is Mario going to pull an upset here against the Boomerang Champ? Yeah, and that same Boomerang Championship, of course, has gone between uh, both of these superstars here. It all started way back when, that uh, before Money in the Bank, Dusty White won his first ever uh, Boomerang Championship victory at Payback after beating the Trash Man. And then Super Mario was in a fatal four-way matchup, Falls Counts Anywhere match, with uh, Little Mac and two others to uh, gain contendership into the Money in the Bank matchup. And Super Mario won that one. Meanwhile, Puff Moth had to win his Fatal 4-Way to gain his contendership. And then, Money in the Bank, it was Dusty White, Trash Man, Super Mario, and Puff Moth in a Fatal 4-Way Ladders match. Three of them, of course, that I just mentioned were all previous uh, Boomerang Championship holders. Super Mario was the underdog of that night, but yet to everybody's surprise, he came through with a victory, earning his first ever Boomerang Championship victory at Money in the Bank. And Little Mac... Well, he wasn't pleased with that one. Yeah, he, uh, he fucking lost in that fatal four-way due to a uh, rope break not being seen by the referee, and he wasn't too pleased with that one. So he decided to uh, square up with Super Mario and put on a damn good performance, so he earned himself a title shot. Shot as it out. Quick two-count, Mario kicks up. He earned himself a title shot at uh, fucking Battleground. Sure enough, one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with fucking Mario and Little Mac. Well, he fucking destroyed it. One KO punch and that was all she wrote. Mac was the new champ. Super Mario, of course, not to be outdone. Wanted a uh, rematch. Sure enough, two weeks later, Little Mac offered up the uh, Boomerang Championship belt outside of a pay-per-view event. Yeah, and he still fucking lost. We rarely ever see uh, the championship on the line outside of a pay-per-view event matchup. But hey, Little Mac, uh, he put the belt on the line. Or I should say, put his money where his mouth is, and uh, yeah, came through on top. Super Mario was then scheduled to uh, have another rematch at uh, SummerSlam. But more than that in a bit, Dusty White with a white twister under the corner here. Beautiful impact. Quick cover hand. One, two. No, a two counter Mario kicks out. Well, I need a quick drink here. Remember to stay hydrated, folks. Good old H2O. <clears throat> Considering we're not allowed to fucking drink on the job, so might as well go for the next best thing, eh? Wait, wait, wait. All right. Uh, SummerSlam. Mario was scheduled to go for a um, his second matchup. But uh, Dusty White attacked him uh, before the matchup even began. And now Mario trying to go for a comeback here. Big spine buster there. And the Goomba stomp to follow up. 
And now shoulders it down. One. No, one and a half count. Oh, he fucking kicked out of that one. He almost threw him off. Bit early for the uh, three count there, Mario. Might want to do a bit more damage on the uh, on the champ. There you go. That's one way to do it. Give him the old fucking hammer drop. Mario, beautiful hammer drop there. Can I get the pinfall one more time? Shoulders are down. One. Two. No, a two count this time. And Dusty kicks out. Yeah, again with a lot of fucking vigor. Might have been a two count this time, but he's still almost throwing him off for those fucking kickouts. Dusty White looking for the White Thunderbomb. Can't quite connect. Mario putting him on the uh, top turnbuckle here. Mario. Oh, German suplex from the top turnbuckle. Boy, the fucking champ went flying there. Shoulders down again. One. Two. Now another kick out of two by Dusty. Three pinfiles and three kickouts. The champ not under this one yet, but he needs to uh, fight back in this uh, contest here. Gets a quick slam. But yeah, Dusty fucking attacks Super Mario before his matchup at uh, SummerSlam. Weaseled his way into a championship matchup with Little Mac. And then won his second uh, Boomerang Championship. And of course, he still held it to this day. He defended the championship at Night of Champions against Little Mac. He defended it at Hell in a Cell against Shaggy. And now he's going to defend it at fucking uh, Elimination Chamber. And uh, I think my money is going to be in an Elimination Chamber matchup. Which means Dusty's going to have to defend it against six, uh, sorry, five other cunts. And, uh, well, nobody's defended the championship in an Elimination Chamber in the history of Australian Takeover. Dusty White setting it up one more time. White Twister out of the corner there. And now he goes for a cover. One, two, three. No, a two count. Dusty Clint hand came down for the three, but ref says he kicked out before the hand made contact with the mat. So it is a two count and we will continue. And now here we go. White Thunderbomb connects. One, two, three. There's the bow. And that's all she wrote. Dusty Y with a victory for the third week in the row. Yeah, Super Mario just can't fucking get a victory over this cup. Three weeks straight and Dusty White's just been fucking running away with it. Well, that's all from us Australian Takeover Thursday for this week. We'll see you all next time. Same time, same place. Okay, so don't actually go anywhere, obviously. Look at that. Five and eight. Jesus Christ. No wonder he fucking keeps winning because he's got so many goddamn status effects. Well, I mean, if he keeps winning, he might actually defend his championship at not Survivor Series at Elimination Chamber. Right, so we set up the next six matchups. Uh, while I'm doing that, you guys get a commercial break.
like an actual commercial break because I've just figured out how to do that. So uh, let me hide this. No, not that one. That one. There we go. So we'll go to an ad break and I'll see you all guys in three minutes, probably. put some something on for the recording so it actually has music <laughs> anyway. people watching the recording going what's fucking ad break <laughs> I mean you can't just skip ahead of here anyway not like it fucking matters That ad break should be over, yeah? Pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Cool. All right, we can uh, get back underway. Probably should have gone to the toilet in that break, but uh, oh well. Guess I'll just have to go after these intros. <laughs> 180 seconds isn't all that long when you really think about it.
The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied by Doc Lewis from the Bronx, New York, standing five foot tall and weighing 117 pounds, Little Mac. opponent, accompanied by Puff Mop from Toronto, Canada, weighing in at 190 pounds, the Canadian Devil, The Spoon. There's the bell, and we are underway. Need ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our scheduled broadcast of Australian Take of a Thursday. I'm your ringside commentator, David Foster. Joining me always, my partner in crime, Hall of Famer, yeah, Bruce Johnson. My name, you go. We're fucking back with more Australian Take of a Thursday action. We're only two days away from elimination chamber, and I can't fucking wait. Let me tell you. Yeah, of course, Elimination Chamber in two days' time, but of course, before we get there, we got six more matchups uh, before our pay-per-view event. Yeah, some pretty uh, pretty decent fucking uh, lineup we got here tonight. We got Little Mac and uh, the Spoo going head-to-head -head here tonight, both with their own fucking managers. We got Lara Croft and Rose White going head-to-head -head later on tonight. Uh, sorry, coming up next, actually. And we got the Dark Horses and the fucking Warrior Brothers. Fighting for the number one contender spot for the Kunderwear Championship. That should be fucking good. Also for uh, number one contender spots, we've got Sam Rai taking on uh, former three-time Boomerang Champion Shaquille O'Neal for the number one contender spot. And then we've also got uh, two rivalries uh, later on tonight, Vladimir Putin and Senator Armstrong and Super Mario and Dusty White. Yeah, those four have been sort of going back and some forwards between each other for the past couple of weeks, so it'll be interesting to see what happens near the end of the night. But more on that later. What do we got here in front of us? Fucking Mac and, uh, well, we got a boy from the Bronx taking on a Canadian devil. Yeah, seems about right. Yeah, Little Mac, of course, one of the, uh, Season 2 additions here for Australian Takeover joining, uh, Samus Aran, Mega Man, Ken Masters, and Solid Snake. Lunamac, of course, the only one of these five accompanied by a manager. Which, as we see over there, is uh, Doc Lewis. Yeah, so technically there were six editions um, for Season 2, but we don't really count Doc Lewis because he's not actually a... he's a fighter. He's only a manager. The only time we ever see him is with Little Mac and we Fit Trainer. And of course, on the other side, uh, two competitors who have uh, been here since the start of Australian Takeover, the Spoo, who is accompanied by Pop Moth. 
Yeah, Pomp, a uh, fucking former two-time Cote de World champion and a former Boomerang champion, being the manager for the uh, the Canadian Devil here, who surprisingly hasn't won a uh, championship yet, although he's been real fucking close. you got to give him credit. I believe his, uh, his last championship shot was uh, fucking... Tell you what, it was Survivor Series last year in the Elimination Chamber. And now Spur lining him up for the devilish kick. Oh. Right in the little max. Cover here. Gets the two count. Matt kicks out. Did you just make another fucking pun? Yeah, I get paid for it, don't I? Trust me, I've got one for every superstar that su uh, that Spoo fights. I'm prepared for this shit, don't worry. And now back in the corner again. Little Mac trying to even the score with a corner combination. Yeah, Spoo just put him in the corner for that fucking devilish kick. And now Mac just turns around and fucking beats the shit out of him. As you do. Mac going for the cover now. One. No, one and a half count. And Spoo kicks out. He's still got plenty of energy left in the tank, it seems. But yeah, the Spoo, not uh, not having a championship to his name, but he's gotten damn well close. I think he was uh, third place in the Elimination Chamber, and holy shit! Look out! Quick cover. One, two, three. There's the bell, and what a finisher! I don't know what it was. Fucking bad. What a shit pun. <laughs> I tried not laughing right after I made it. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Danny, that's a shit fucking pun. It's not even really a pun. Well, that's one down, five to go. Look at this shit. What? Fucking did it. Litamac with a beautiful KO punch in midair, and wow, the move living up to its name, down goes Spoo. Yeah, that KO punch fucking. They got the three count that he wanted, mate. Big fucker, strong victory for Little Mac there. Don't go anywhere though, we got Divas match coming up next. Now, is something going to happen for this matchup? Lara attacked Rose last week. Although I should be saying this in the actual match in character, but anyway. You're just gonna hear it twice, I suppose. <laughs> <clears throat> the loading screens are the only time you're ever going to see me break character. I do try my best for realism, don't you know? Even if I'm going to do fucking two personalities. The straight man and can't. The following contest is scheduled for one file. Introducing first, from London, England, she is the Sheila's champion, Lara Croft.
and her opponent from Matt Beck, Australia, Rose White. And here we go, second matchup is underway. Good old fashioned Divas contest. Rose White and fucking Lara Croft going ahead to head one more time. And of course, Rose and Lara going uh, back and forth over the past few weeks. Here at Australian Takeover, three weeks ago, Lara and Rose first met up. Rose getting a, a solid victory over Lara. Lara, of course, then losing to, then lost to Raven the following week. After Rose came down and uh, distracted the uh, the champion, Lara not too pleased with that one. Attacked Rose before the matchup last week, and now it all comes down to here tonight as the two face off for the final time before Elimination Chamber. Yeah, because uh, no doubt the two of them are going to be fighting for the Sheila's Championship in two days' time. But the question is, who gets the momentum going into that matchup? And uh, momentum is pretty fucking important in this business. Can Lara get two back-to-back -back wins, or is uh, Rose going to pull off an upset? Big boot there. Rose and Lara both, of course, five-time Sheila's champions. No other diva coming close to that record quite yet. Yeah, I think the uh, the closest is fucking Raven at a two-time cunt do it. Uh, sorry, Sheila's champion. And I believe uh, Samus and Wii Fit have both won at once. Funny enough, the only diva who hasn't won the uh, the championship yet is uh, fucking Princess Daisy. But uh, one of these days, she's going to prove me wrong, though. Lara goes for a quick cover here. She gets a two count. Rose kicks up. But Samus, of course, being the uh, the Season 2 Diva Edition, bringing our uh, total count up to six Divas. Yeah, we could finally do the uh, the more interesting matchups. Elimination Chamber, six Sheila over the top rope Battle Royale, uh, six Diva Hell in a Cell. You know, there's so many great matchups you can do with six fucking people. It uh, puts on a really good show. We had a six Diva over the top rope Battle Royale at uh, Battleground uh, a few months ago. And that was when uh, Rose won the uh, Sheila's Championship. She, of course, uh, lost the belt, I believe, at SummerSlam. Uh, to uh, to Raven. And she got her second uh, Sheila's Championship victory. And then Raven lost it to Lara at fucking Hell in a Cell. Rose going for a quick cover here. She gets a two count. And Lara kicks up. But yeah, the fucking Samus is our sixth edition at season two. I'm uh, kind of curious on what Diva's going to join us for season three. Since I have heard we are following the uh, the same trend of season two. And now look at this. Around the world we go with Lara Croft. Shoulders are down. One. Two. No, uh, two and a half. And Rose kicks out in the nick of time. And of course, season three is a few months away. But more on that in a bit. Reverse swipe twister from Rose. And now she goes for the cover. One, two. Now the two count and Lara kicks out. Okay, you got to do a bit more than that if you uh, want to get the pinfall, mate. And now Rose with a big neck breaker. Uh, season three will start in, I uh, believe, sometime in March or April. We will add uh, five new superstars to the uh, the lineup here at Australian Takeover. Yeah, one fucking diva and uh, four males. So, it'll be interesting to see um, 
who joins us for season three. I know I've got a few people that uh, placing their bets on who's going to join us. Me personally, I don't really have any uh, any predictions so far, but I'm sure we'll find out that uh, Royal Rumble, because that's when they get unveiled, our biggest event of the year, besides uh, fucking WrestleMania. And personally, my favourite event. The Royal Rumble's just fantastic. 30 cunts into that fucking ring, and 29 of them get thrown over the ropes. It's beautiful. The event's so good, we uh, we made a 10-man Royal Rumble just for SummerSlam. Not to mention the... Uh, the Six Diva Battle Royale we were mentioning earlier is basically the same thing, but only with six cunts. Larry here trying to set up rules under the commentator's table. Oh, we already fucking... We broke this table last week. Is she going to break it again this week? I think Armstrong got put through this last week. Hang on, where's, uh, where's Lara going? The table's over here. Ah, shit, look out. Lara! Beautiful moon salt right under the table. Ah, fuck, there goes me water. Alright, I got it. Well, now i got to fucking hold the damn thing. I haven't got a table to put it on. We'll get that fucking shit fixed up before the next matchup anyway. Both contenders now back inside the ring here. Lara with the momentum on her side. Can she make the most of it? Back in the corner we go. Oh, into the tree of wool. Okay, not something you see all that often. Lara going for a... Not going for a backstabber. Oh, falling drop kick. Right into the mix section there of Rose. Now Lara going for a quick cover here, but the kick out's instant. Yeah, he got caught on the on the ropes there. Just couldn't quite get the uh, proper three count. And now back in the corner one more time. Round the world we go. Shoulders are down. One, two, three. No, two. Ref's hand came down for the three count, but he counts it as a two. Rose must have kicked out before the hand came down. And this matchup will continue. Can't gotta be honest, I thought it was all fucking over, but... Rose just uh, just getting away by the skin of her teeth, but... Uh, I don't think she's gonna get into this one, mate. Lara Croft going for a Tomb Raider. Center impact. Shoulders are down. One. Two, three. There's the bell. Now that's all she wrote. Ah, uh, poor Rose. I don't think she's going to be winning that championship in two days' time. Since that's two back to backs, but we'll see. If I've learned anything from doing this after a year and a half, it's to expect the fucking unexpected. And that shit never goes the way you want it to. That's the other thing. Who are they fighting? Warrior Brothers. <clears throat> Warrior She's supposed to be a bitch, Rafi. That's the that's the uh, that's the point of Lara. <laughs> I gotta have one bitch, Diva. Like, come on. Lara Croft with a second victory in a row. Not uh, not needing the attack before the matchup this time, getting a clean victory. Yeah, and Lara's gonna run the momentum all the way through uh, Elimination Chamber. The question is, can she use it to its fullest and uh, defend that Sheila's Championship? We'll find it in two days' time, but for now, don't go anywhere. We got a tag team matchup coming up next for the number one contender spot.
the Dark Horses, and the fucking Warrior Brothers. Who comes in first? Dark Horses. Right. It's funny, I actually had a completely different intro music for the, uh, for the Dark Horses, and it was edgy as fuck. Dark Horses! Or some shit like that, I don't know what the fuck. But, um, it got copyright strike, strike on it, so I couldn't fucking monetize. I was like, ah, shit, I need to find a new intro music for these guys. And, uh, yeah, now I've got the one they have now, which is pretty fucking good. Uh, you can bet like this let me show you so i want to bet on the dark horses right so that's zero and then the amount so let's say a hundred and then the bet logs in and you can check your amount with this ignore the amount that i have i have that amount because i'm always watching my own stream so that doesn't fucking count oh and you can also multi-bet so you can bet on both of them but there's no real point The following tag team match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the United States, look at my weight of 538 pounds. Gummy John and Dark Nukem, the Dark Horses. opponents from WarioWare Incorporated with a combined weight of 447 pounds Wario and Waluigi the Wario Brothers Bell and our third matchup of tonight is underway. Tag team contest between the Warrior Brothers and the uh, Dark Horses here tonight. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of wins between these two, and now it all comes down to this. Number one contender is on the fucking line. The winner tonight goes to fucking Elimination Chamber in two days' time to fight the Enforcers for the Cunt Duo Championship. The Warrior Brothers, of course, our former number one contender, has had to beat the. Uh, Team Fabulous to uh, be here tonight as they uh, managed to uh, get a victory over them last week. The Warrior Brothers, of course, uh, challenged the Enforcers for the Cotton Duo Championship last month at Hell in a Cell, but unfortunately was unable to get the victory. 
yeah, they fucking beat him in the um, in a standard matchup, like when the title wasn't on the line two weeks before Hell in a Cell. But then when the title was on the line, the uh, the the boys in blue just sort of pulled through, I suppose. The Warrior Brothers have definitely been impressing, you know. They beat um, they beat Team Fabulous way back when they were still the cunt duo champions. And then they beat the Enforcers when they were the fucking cunt duo champions. So they were pretty much, you know, on a roll to win. But then the Enforcers just shut them back down at fucking Hell in a Cell. And, um, yeah, they, they fucking held on to that championship. But yeah, the question is, can they hold on to it again? If they defend it uh, at... Um, Elimination Chamber that, that'll go on to 12 weeks straight and they'll tie for the record the uh, longest title streak with that uh, the blue man group and the stream team That's uh, 12 weeks The Warrior Brothers uh, both doing some work there on uh, Duke Nukem on the outside making the most of the uh, tag team advantage You get the other cunt to the other side of the ring and uh, boy is he in for a fucking bad time let me tell you you're gonna take every advantage you can get in these tag team matchups, mate. And uh, if any tag teams would uh, make the most of those advantages, it'd be these two right here. The Warrior Brothers and the fucking Dark Horses. Quick cover here. He'll get a two count. Duke kicks out. Duke trying to make a tag to Gummy John. Unsuccessful, gets put in the corner. Damn, there's only one way down. Oh, look at Oh, neck breaker from the top turnbuckle. While well, Luigi almost looking for the uh, go over the top rope there, but not quite. Yeah, I've noticed these days, uh, while well, Luigi, a bit more of a high flyer than he used to be. I never took him for the aerial type, but hey, whatever works. Duke Nukem now catching a breather here, able to tag to his uh, partner Gummy John. Yeah, not a tag team I was uh, expecting when we first started uh, Australian Takeover. Back when we first started, uh, Gummy John was in a tag team with fucking Pomp Moth. And they formed the uh, the Stream Team. We went on to become uh, two-time Cut to Champions. And as we said earlier, 12-week record for the longest time held for the Cut to a Championship. And of course, that tag team disbanded right about this time last year, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, both of them went on to uh, do their own things. Pomp went on to win the uh, Boomerang Championship. Gummy tried to do the same, but he was unsuccessful. And then he donned his new uh, quote-unquote dark attire after seeing Duke Nukem do the same thing. Yeah, Duke Nukem, of course, uh, also didn't start out in that attire, but uh, donned the new uh, dark look before WrestleMania of last year. And started uh, attacking superstars in Extreme Rules matchups. And after Gummy uh, followed in his footsteps, the two of them agreed to make a tag team to uh, quote unquote fuck shit up in the tag team championships. Yeah, they did a pretty good fucking job of it. I'm uh, kind of surprised the two cunts haven't uh, won the Cut Duo Championship quite yet. Although they have gone back and forth between the uh, against the enforcers for a good eight weeks for a while, so they weren't really able to go for the championship then. But that would be a fucking beautiful sight to see if the enforcers, uh, yeah, the enforcers have to go up against dark horses if they win here tonight. Warrior goes for a quick cover, gets a two count, gummy kicks out. Of course, every uh, superstar in that ring right now has a uh, championship win to their name. The Warrior Brothers, of course, former one-time Cut Duo champions. Gummy John, a former two-time Cut Duo champion. And Duke Nukem, a former Outback champion. Yeah, fucking good old Duke Nukem. He lost the uh, money in the bank cash-in from last year. Gets a quick two-count there. And he was unsuccessful. And then he won it at fucking Battleground in a six-man elimination chamber matchup. After a year and a half, Duke Nukem finally won the Outback Championship, mate. But uh, unfortunately for him, he lost it uh, eight weeks later at uh, 
Night of Champions when uh, Vladimir Putin cashed in. Which was a bit of cruel irony, that, you know. You know, he fails to cash in last year, then all of a sudden, someone else gets a successful cash in on him. You can't write this shit, I swear. Speaking of, Duke Nukem now going for the USA suplexes here. One, two, and three. And now, shoulders are down. One, two. No, and a kick out of two by Wario. Duke Nukem now looking to put him away here. Oh, this is some fucking damage. Look out, cunt. Come get some. Down goes Wario, but is he out? There we go. Cover. One. Two. No, Waluigi kicks, uh, breaks up the three count there. Yeah, he was sort of pinfold on the uh, closest side of Waluigi there, able to get the, uh, the easy kick out. That's the thing about fucking uh, tag team matchups. You got a lot to take in. Where's your opponent? Where's the uh, where's his tag team partner? How much damage have I done? Do I need to tag out? Does he need to tag out? Not as easy as it looks. Although personally, I haven't done many tag team competitions myself. I got my Hall of Famer from uh, all the singles contests back in the day. Wario now getting put in the corner here. Is Gummy John getting tagged in? Yeah, the corner is somewhere you, you don't want to be against uh, Gummy and against uh, fucking Wario. Wario, of course, has got that uh, Wario waft. Uh, waft? You can never say that fucking word. In the corner. And uh, Gummy John, he's got that fucking Sonic kick. But though he's not the only cunt with uh, good kicks in that ring, Waluigi's got uh, those twin super kicks. That'll uh, definitely knock you out cold, that's for damn sure. We got a lot of kickers in this business, and, uh, well, Gummy and Waluigi are two of them. Meanwhile, you've got fucking Duke and uh, Wario on the outside there. Both of them are um, sort of upper body specialists or grappling. Waluigi, of course, also one of two. Only superstars in the uh, roster to stand over seven foot tall. The only other superstar being uh, Shaquille O'Neal, former three-time Boomerang Champion. You know, I don't think we've had a matchup with both uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Waluigi yet. We might have had one, but it'll be an interesting matchup. Oh, Waluigi with a quick cover here. Look at this. Gets a two count. Duke breaks it up. And now both Dark Horses putting on a huge slam there. Gummy John with the backbreaker and Duke Nukem with the German suplex there. Yeah, the Warrior Brothers just kind of got fucking wrecked there. And now Waluigi go with the free super kick. Gummy John running uh, low on empty there. He goes for a cover. Ref gets knocked out. I mean... Yeah, knocking out the ref is a valid strategy, but uh, Wario, your tag partner, was the one that was getting tagged there. Well, uh, well, Luigi, we just missed that with a wad drop there. And now following up with the elbow drop from the top rope. Not giving Gummijan any time to cover here. And now the big boot to the midsection. Yeah, Waluigi's just going straight from one fucking move to the next, mate. Gummy might be able to find some ground here. Big gut master there. Yeah, 
Gummy John taking the opportunity to make a much needed tag to his partner Duke here. Yeah, but I don't think he could fare any better against Waluigi though. Waluigi, a quick cover. He gets a two count, Duke kicks up. Yeah, I think Duke's still the uh, still the fresh man, mate. You gotta do a bit more damage on the count if you uh, wanna get that all important three count. Oh, a quick fucking suplex there, look at that. Just the pure strength that's on display from uh, Duke. He's not an outback champion for nothing. And now look at this. Duke Nukem with the USA power bombs. A US and the fucking A. There we go. Is that enough though? That's the question. Don't think he's dragged him far away enough from Warrior. Don't think it's going to matter though. Well, Luigi kicks out anyway at the two. Well, Luigi now getting put in the corner here. But gets out of trouble. Oh, and a quick, beautiful DDT there from Waluigi. Now he takes the opportunity to tag to Warrior. Yeah, now you got the fucking, uh, the two heaviest cunts going hand to head here. Wario and fucking Duke Nukem. Oh, now look at this. Fucking come get some. Down goes Wario. Here we go. Cover one more time. One. Two. Now oh, well, Waluigi breaks up the three count. That's the thing about tag matchups, mate. You gotta worry about the other fucking tag partner. You can't just, uh, go hand for those pinfalls. You gotta either trust in your tag partner to get the intercept, or try and go for a pinfall far away enough from, uh, from his tag partner. And now Duke just toying a work there on a Wario with the several strikes there. Yeah, any more of those and he might just fucking crack him open. Duke Nukem with a warrior wear slam there. And now takes the opportunity, tags back to Gummy. Gummy John going for the right hook. Wario gets out of trouble. Doesn't get him far though as he gets in the corner. Oh, hang on. I think I might know what's coming next year. Yep, here we go. Look out, cunt. Sonic kick coming through. Oh, a big impact. Gummy John goes for the pinfall now. One. Two. No, and Waluigi once again breaking up that three count. Gummy looking to put him away here. Oh, he's going to lock him up, mate, and throw away the key. Gay baby jail coming through. Shoulders are down. One. Two. Now Waluigi once again breaking up that three count. God, tell you what, fucking uh, hook down goes the ref. Waluigi's really been on point with these uh, interceptions. Either that or Duke Nukem's been slacking in his interceptions, so. But yeah, that's three back to back failed pinfalls. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, the winner of tonight goes on to Elimination Chamber to fight the uh, Cotton Duo Champions, the Enforcers, for the championship. The Dark Horses, of course, had to win two previous matchups to get here tonight. They had to beat both the Mario Brothers and uh, the Texas Boys to uh, earn their ticket here tonight. The Mario Brothers, as the former number one contenders, only had to beat Team Fabulous turn their ticket here and of course the uh, the two winners going head to head can the dark horses win three in a row or will the warrior brothers stop the momentum warrior looking to put on some damage here with a warrior wear slam right in front of Duke Nukem well he's, he's yeah saw that one coming <laughs> Pinfall right in front of fucking Duke. You know what's going to happen there. He's going to, you know, break up the three count. No one to make it too easy for him. Come on, Warrior. Now 
Wario and uh, Gummy John both starting to run low on uh, well, an energy here. Wario quickly back to his feet, though. Gummy makes a quick tag. Yeah, much needed fucking tag from the, uh, the Dark Horses there. I don't know how much more Gummy John could have pulled through there. Wario really fucking needs to make a tag, though. He's been getting the shit kicked out of him for the past fucking five minutes. Gay baby jail, Sonic kick, and a come get some. The only reason this match is still going is because of fucking Waluigi. Duke Nukem now, he goes for a pinfall. And again, Waluigi, consistent as hell, breaking up these uh, pinfalls. Yeah, either that or the uh, Dark Horses just sort of failing to uh, intercept Waluigi. I mean, sure, he's, you know, a lightweight, but he's not that fast. Gummy John attacking Waluigi on ringside here in front of us. As we go to the action back inside the ring between uh, Wario and Duke Nukem. Oh, big punch from fucking Gummy there. Oh, Waluigi just got fucking laid out in front of us. Back in the ring, Duke Nukem getting thrown around by uh, Wario here. And now quick cover here. One. Two. No, and Gummy John breaking up the three count. Jeez, uh, I'll tell you what, we've been going for quite a while here. 15 minute matchup almost. It's not a, no, you know, not the longest match ever, but it's definitely fucking up there. I think the longest match we ever had was 50 minutes, I think. Oh, hang on. D uh, Duke Nukem going for a pinfall here. Waluigi's going to break it up in just in time. Almost thought that was a three count. If I can tell you what, Waluigi, as I said, just been consistent as all hell breaking up these pinfalls. This match should have been over five minutes ago. And now look at this. Come get some from Duke Nukem one more time. Shoulders are down. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. Finally, they get the victory. Holy fuck. Six times I fucking broke up that goddamn pinfall. I swear to god. I was like, I'm gonna be so pissed if the fucking Dark Horses lose after all that. I was about to say before we got the pinfall, the longest match we've ever had is 50 minutes. And it was a uh six-man elimination chamber tag team matchup uh sorry six-man elimination tag team That shit took fucking forever. I think I've had... No, the Royal Rumble actually was only 30 minutes, funny enough. A 30-man Royal Rumble, and it was faster than a uh, six-man tag team matchup. <laughs> Waluigi breaking up the pinfall six times, but seven was too much, and the Dark Horse is finally getting that victory. Yeah, now they'll get to uh, get to face their long-time rivals, the Enforcers for the Kondo World Championship at uh, Elimination Chamber. It's definitely going to be a heated matchup between the two in two days' time, but don't go anywhere. we got an Extreme Rules matchup coming up next. It's my boy coming up next. Who I'm actually talking about will leave up to your interpretation. But uh, Shaquille O'Neal has probably my favorite intro. And uh, <clears throat> you'll see why. <sighs> well, thank you, Rafi. I do try. <laughs> I 
Like I said, I've been doing this shit for a year and a half. The following Extreme Rules match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Lithuania, weighing in at 194 pounds, Sam Roth. And his opponent from Newark, New Jersey, standing seven foot tall and weighing 326 pounds, Shaquille O'Neal. In a Chinese town by the name of Hong Kong. Evil forces had made a dark plan. What planet needed was huge black man, an orphan baby with special power. And a magic symbol of a lotus flower. His teenage body like new Lamborghini, he waxed my rickshaw in tight Lamborghini. God, I love that fucking intro. <clears throat> and here we go. Match four is underway. Extreme rules between Sam Rai and Shaquille O'Neal here for a number one contender spot for the Boomerang Championship. Yeah, in two days' time, we're going to have a six-man elimination chamber for the Boomerang Championship. Dusty White's going to have to defend it against five other cunts. Two of said cunts are uh, these two right here, Sam Rye and uh, Shaquille O'Neal. The winner of this matchup basically becomes the last man to enter the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, how the Elimination Chamber works is there's uh, six superstars in total. Two of them will start. One will be the, uh, the champion, of course, Dusty White, and the other being the uh, number five contender, which will be the loser of tonight's matchup here. And then, of course, uh, the other four will enter one at a time. And the last man to enter the uh, ring will, of course, be the number one contender. And the winner of tonight's matchup will become that number one contender. Of course, this is a uh, an extreme rules matchup. The uh, rules are quite simple. There are no countouts and no disqualifications. They win by pinfall or submission on your opponent inside the squared circuit. Oh, speaking of, look at that fucking Shaquille O'Neal going for that uh, that uh, crossbody on the Sam Rye, but he got inside the ring before he got hit by it. And now Sam Rye's got that fucking big ladder. It's not a ladder match, but he's going to do some damage. Oh, look out! Oh, just the steel colliding with fucking flesh there. Oh, big impact. Down goes Shaq. Oh, trust me. If you think the ladder hitting uh, flesh is bad, just wait till you hear the steel steps colliding with flesh. 
Oh, that's a sound you can't forget, let me tell you. I don't know if they'll do it in a night, but... Uh, if you watch Australian Tango long enough, trust me, you'll fucking hear it. The other sound I can never forget is uh, the skull-crushing big boot that some of these fucking superstars pull off. They'll, uh, they'll put their head right up against the steel ring post to see on the outside here. And just fucking boot right into the into their head, into the fucking post. Whoa, oh, it's something else. Well, uh, speaking of kicks, Sam Ryan going with a deja vu here in the fucking corner. Going to work on Shaq. It's Sam Ryan, definitely the uh, underdog of this competition here. It's uh, Shaquille O'Neal, a former three-time boomerang champion. Cover here. Gets a two-count. Shaq kicks out. And Shaq holds the record for the longest time in the Boomerang Championship at 12 weeks. Actually, tell you what, I don't think he's the only count. I think Dusty White's actually tied him for that. Good Lord! Code breaker in midair. Shoulders are down. One, two, three. There's the pinfall and what a finisher. Wow, that got me out of fucking nowhere. So you know what, just for you guys, I'm just gonna make them both win. Fuck it. Mm, free money for everybody. Watch the shit. Code breaker in mid air. <laughs> Sam Ryan with a dominating victory there, mid air code breaker, and that was all she wrote for the former three time champ. Cobo just going out of it. Hey, was the underdog, but uh, hey, I've been proven wrong before, that's for damn sure. Sam Ryan is now our new number one contender. We'll be seeing him in two days' time in Elimination Chamber, but don't go anywhere. We got a singles match coming up next. Vladimir Putin and Senator Armstrong. Quick match is a good match. Ugh. Yeah, see, you know, fuck it. Let's just reward everyone. Free money. And you get some money. And you get some dollar dues. Oh, God, now there's an idea. Oprah in fucking WWE. I don't think I could ever recreate that. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from St. Petersburg, Russia, weighing in at 227 pounds, he is the Outback Champion, Vladimir Putin. And 
his opponent from Colorado, United States, weighing in at over 400 pounds, Senator Armstrong. There's the bell, and our fifth matchup of tonight is underway. Vladimir Putin taking on Senator Armstrong once again here tonight. Okay, fucking, uh, I don't know if you all caught last week, but uh, Senator Armstrong was scheduled to have a matchup with fucking Pomf Monf. And then Vladimir Putin attacked Pomf before the matchup even started. And, uh, and then these two went fucking head to head against each other. But Armstrong still pulled through with a fucking victory, though, so. I'm curious to see if the uh, if the challenger can win back-to-back uh, -back victories like what Lara Croft has been doing, or is the champ going to pull through with a uh, defense here? Vladimir Putin and Senator Armstrong, of course, two of the uh, top contenders in the uh, in the uh, Australian Takeover universe, both being a one-time Outback champion holders. Although Vladimir Putin being the newest Outback champion. And Senator Armstrong being the oldest. Yeah, back when we started uh, Australian Takeover Thursday over a year and a half ago, Senator Armstrong was our first ever Outback champion. Uh, he lost it at payback last year to uh, the Terminator. And uh, ever since then, he's pretty much been chasing the fucking championship. I don't think I can count the amount of uh, contender shots he's actually fucking had. But uh, he's, he's definitely had a lot, let me tell you. Armstrong's up there with um, Terminator, Dusty White, and some of the others for the most pay-per-view event um, appearances. I've actually got a fucking spreadsheet here somewhere. I'll tell you the exact numbers in a minute. Most pay-per-view event entered. The most is Dusty White and Trash Man. They've entered 16 pay-per-view events. Duke Nukem and Armstrong, they're for 15. And then you got Pomp Mart from the Terminator at 14. Armstrong here is also the most pay-per-view events. Dusty White's at 9, Duke Nukem and Armstrong are at 8, and we've got uh, Ruji and the Spoo at 7. So Armstrong's definitely, you know, he, he's been one of our big contenders over the past year or so, but he's just, just been out of reach of, that, uh, of the biggest belt in the business. Well, you say biggest belt in the business, but uh, the Outback Championship could no longer be um, the biggest belt to go for soon enough. Yeah, I've actually heard works of um, a big 32 King of the Ring tournament coming up in a few weeks' time, according to, the, uh, according to my general manager. Apparently, he's cooking up something. Quick cover here by Vladimir. Gets the two count. Armstrong kicks out. Apparently, he told us it's going to be a, a once-a-year kind of thing. 32 competitors all seated in a King of the Ring tournament it's spread out over several months and the winner earns a, uh, a brand new belt that we haven't seen yet so it's not the Outback Championship it's not the Boomerang Championship it's uh, better than both of them apparently and the only time you can win it is during this uh, big King of the Ring tournament apparently he hasn't gotten a name for it yet he's, uh, he's going to get back to us on that one he'll tell us when he actually uh, unveils it which is probably after Elimination Chamber, if I had to bet. So it's definitely going to be something to look forward to in the uh, next few months. Vladimir Putin now trying to put some damage in with a beautiful Russian leg sweep. And now cover one, two. No, a two and a half, and Armstrong gets the kick out. Look at this fucking nano machine, son. You can't get him down that easy. Also a reminder, stay hydrated, kids. Senator Armstrong getting out of trouble there now. But 
But uh, speaking of uh, events to look forward to in the uh, next couple of months, Royal Rumble in fucking two months' time. We've got uh, No Way Out next month, and we've got fucking uh, Royal Rumble right after that in January. I fucking, oh, I'm looking forward to that, mate. The Royal Rumble as well is when we'll be unveiling the Season 3 uh, Australian Takeover New Editions. This year, of course, we had the uh, Samus Aran, Ken Masters, Solid Snake, Little Mac, and Mega Man join us here at Australian Takeover. And Doc Lewis. You can't forget about the Doc. And technically speaking, uh, Shaggy was a Season 2 edition, but uh, he made his appearance at the Royal Rumble, so he just came in a few months early. He's technically a Season 2 edition. And now Armstrong, look at this. USA power bombs. Wait a minute, that's Duke Dukums. And he's gonna follow it up here. He's in the corner. Look out, ref. You're right in the middle of him. Armstrong lining it up here. American clothesline hits the mark. And now shoulders it down. One. Two. Now and Vladimir with a kick out of two. Oh, the fucking ref standing in between the two of them, but he, he, he's learned from his mistakes. He got out of the way. It's not like the fucking uh, divine kick of Leon the Crusaders, which has taken out the referee about, what, three times now? Honestly, I start to lose track of the fucking cup. Oh, and a big fucking clothesline there from Putin. Almost took his head off for that one. But yeah, Royal Rumble, my favourite event of the year. I don't know if I've, uh, I think I've said that enough times already, but I'm going to say it again. 30 fucking cunts will enter that ring and only one will be victorious. And the winner gets to challenge the Outback Championship holder at WrestleMania, the grandest fucking stage of them all. So that'll definitely be something to uh, watch for. Of course, last year's, uh, well, technically this year's Royal Rumble winner was, um, oh, hang on a minute, look at this. Vladimir Putin using a flexing arm drop. That's uh, Armstrong's finisher. And he gets the three count with it. Oh, just to rub salt in the wounds, mate. Vladimir Putin with a dominating victory there using Armstrong's own finisher against him. But Armstrong, he, he's not, uh, not going to hold a grudge against him. Oh, hey, sportsmanship in this day and age. That's a bit rare. But, uh, no, good on him, Armstrong. Good on you. Don't go anywhere, though. Our main event's coming up next. Dusty White and uh, Super Mario lock horns once again. As soon as I set it up. <laughs> Oh, they're allies now. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <clears throat> also, just a quick lore lesson for you guys out there. Vladimir, you can see his allies. That's with Sam Rai because they're both Europeans. Uh, his enemy is Donald Trump, of course. And his other enemy is Pant Mart. But I can't remember why they're enemies. All right, because Vladimir attacked him. Totally forgot about that. That was last week. And then we got Armstrong here. Who's allies with, sure enough, do, uh, Donald Trump. But his enemy is with uh, Ruji, because they had rivalry over the championship belt. Same goes for Terminator. And uh, Solid Snake. That was a fun rivalry. Where he picked a, picked a fight with Armstrong as soon as he came into the fucking contest. That was great. <clears throat> now, I bet you any money, nothing's going to happen during uh, this matchup here. Because I'm pretty sure this rivalry is actually fucking broken. Because nothing has happened for like three weeks. Yeah, of course I got Trump, man. I got fucking everybody. I got Trump. I got Vladimir Armstrong. I got Shrek. No, I don't have Hillary. <coughs> I think I've got enough politics in my uh, fake wrestling simulator game. A 
Epstein does not kill himself. Who? Well, to answer you, no, I don't. <laughs> The following contest is scheduled for Unfall! Introducing first, from the Mushroom Kingdom, weighing in at 215 pounds, Super Mario! opponent for Matt Beck Australia weighing in at 232 pounds he is the boomerang champion Dusty White And here we go, our final matchup of tonight to uh, round off our beautiful event, Super Mario and Dusty White, once again going head-to-head uh, -head here tonight. Yeah, they've gone numb. Well, I would say back and forth over the past few weeks, but uh, Dusty White has won three matchups in a fucking row against this cunt. And, uh, well, I'm curious to see if he's going to make it four in a row here against uh, Super Mario. Of course, this all, uh, all started way back before Money in the Bank. Super Mario entered a fatal throwaway Force Counts Anywhere match uh, with Little Mac as one of his opponents. And uh, got a uh, cheeky rope break uh, victory over him. Earning his ticket into the fatal four-way ladder match at Money in the Bank where Dusty White had to defend his championship against uh, Trash Man, Super Mario, and Poff Moth, a another former uh, Boomerang champion. Of course, Super Mario, out of the uh, three contenders there that night, he was the only non-champion. And he was certainly the underdog, but came through with a big victory. Of course, uh, Little Mac, not pleased with that one, started challenging uh, Super Mario for the uh, Boomerang Championship. And after several weeks of uh, back-and-forth contests, Little Mac put on a good enough show to earn his uh, championship shot at Battleground. Yeah, and Little Mac fucking destroyed him. One KO punch, and that was all she wrote. Little Mac was the new Boomerang champ, mate. But uh, Mario, well, he wasn't too pleased about that one. He wanted a rematch, and sure enough, he got one. Fucking two weeks later, he um, challenged Little Mac for the Boomerang Championship. And surprisingly, Little Mac actually accepted. But um, after the match was done, we could see why he was so confident, because, well, he fucking decimated him again. But this time, it took two KO punches. Super Mario, of course, was then uh, scheduled to another title rematch at uh, SummerSlam. Dusty White, of course, then, uh, as we know, attacked Super Mario before the matchup began. And then Dusty White coming through, challenging Little Mac for the Boomerang Championship and winning. Yeah, Dusty White wasn't scheduled to fight, but he came through 
stole the championship and nay that was all she wrote and he's been holding on to the fucking championship ever, ever since it's been uh, yeah it's been 12 weeks now so he's actually tied Shaquille O'Neal for the uh, longest boomerang championship hold and Dusty White uh, defended his championship against Little Mac at uh, Night of Champions and then defended it against uh, Shaggy at uh, Hell in a Cell Dusty going for a quick cover here gets the two count yeah, fucking uh, Shaggy won our Desperado tournament at Night of Champions. Had to win three matchups in a row. I think he beat, uh, what was it, Sam Rye, Nico Bellick, and Bubsy. He beat the three of them, earned his ticket for a championship shot. Went one on one with Dusty and uh, unfortunately couldn't beat him. And Dusty White, of course, uh, one of the uh, top contenders. Here in Australian TakeOver, a former two-time Outback Champion. Former two-time Boomerang Champion. And the reason why is shit like this. White Twister out of the corner. Beautiful impact. And now, quick cover here. One. Two. No, a two and a half, and Mario kicks out. Yeah, Dusty, uh, tell you what, he holds a lot of fucking records here. Oh, but right on the receiving end of that fucking Goomba Stomp, though. And now Mario with a cover. One, two. Oh, and Dusty with a kick out of two. But yeah, fucking Dusty's got a lot of, uh, he holds a lot of records here. It's a bit of bit bullshit if I'm honest. He's in the most matchups at 58, the most victories at 36, the third best win percentage out of any superstar at 62%, which is pretty fucking impressive, honestly. He's at the most pay-per-views entered, most main events, most championship wins at two out back and two boomerangs. And, on top of all that, he holds the longest championship reign at 20 fucking weeks for the Outback Championship. The cunt has his name on just about everything. Like, fuck me, dick. If you want to pick a face for this uh, fucking Australian tag of a series, well, you can look no further than this cunt. And right now, that cunt is uh, getting super kicked into the corner there. Big drop kick there from Mario and the uh, several stomps afterwards. Going to work on the champ. And now Dusty getting put over the top rope. Oh, hang on. Look out, mate. We're going to see someone fly here. Look out. Super Mario with a beautiful dive right under the champ. Dusty White getting laid out right in front of us here. Yeah, Super Mario is a bit of a fucking uh, high flyer there, mate. Using his aerobatic, uh, yeah, aerobatic skills to his fucking uh, advantage. Since Dusty's more of a fucking uh, slugger. Dusty with a quick reversal there. And now Mario goes over the top rope again. This time Dusty puts him over it. Oh, and back inside we go, I guess. We're not uh, not spending all that much time on the outside, are we? I suppose Dusty's more of a more of an in-ring fighter than anything else. This is probably why White Thunderbob coming through. One, two, three. There's the bell, and that's the matchup. And Dusty wins again, shocking literally fucking nobody. Wait, I started betting, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. I just didn't see any bets, so I'm like, hang on a minute. So I swear I'm not biased towards Dusty White. He just somehow wins a lot, okay? I try not to be biased towards my own guy, but it's like, you know, what can you do? 
He is due for a nerf though, I'll be honest. Four matchups and four victories. Dusty White winning over Super Mario every week this month. Now the question remains, what's in store for the two at Elimination Chamber when they go in a six-man tag team matchup? Yeah, we'll be seeing that in uh, fucking two days' time. But for now, that's all from us tonight, mate. We'll see you all then in Elimination Chamber. Fucking nine on a hot streak. God damn. That's why he's winning a lot. Because of the fucking heart streak uh, shit. That says Survivor Series, but ignore it. It's actually an Elimination Chamber, as we see here. So that's in... What did I say? Two days' time? Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. <clears throat> Which would be the... Well, it's the first for me, but it's the 30th for you guys. Which makes sense, because it's... Um, yeah, that's it for tonight, Nep. We've been through 12 matchups. And, um, yeah. Because I did these two last time. And then I did these two tonight. Then we go Elimination Chamber and then yada yada. Fucking Royal Rumble. Kiwi. I need to raid someone before I fucking finish streaming. Looks like it's going to be Pump because he's the only cut that's live. So yeah, I'll see you all then.